Hello and welcome to this new video tutorial of Inventor 2018. The topic I will be covering today is drawings, how to produce drawings in Inventor. So the first thing that I will do is I will open my template. So I'll right click on it and select open with Autodesk Inventor, otherwise it will open it with AutoCAD by default, so... Okay, so my template has now loaded. The first thing that I will be showing you is how to fill in your title block. So I'll expand it and double click on fill text. And now I'm able to just uh, edit the fields. So my title is going to be up. So A3. Date 2018. Okay. The night. Uh, I will click on OK now. And now, as you can see, the title block has updated. So we can now proceed to place our parts so when you click on base the first thing that you need to you need to do is um, click here or open an existing file so if I select my file click on open the inventor will automatically project it as a base view so you have a few choices. You can either um, project it um, as wireframe with hidden lines, or only wireframes with not hidden lines, or simply shade it. Then you can also modify the scale. So I'll make mine two to one. And now you can simply drag and project. So what I do, I normally project the opposite side to the side I want, and I will briefly explain you why. The reason is because Inventor by default projects in first angle, whereas my template is third on third angle. So. After I have projected um, the sides that I want on first angle, all I have to do is just drag it to the opposite side. So they're now on third. Okay, so having done that, the next thing that I will be showing you is how to how to obtain section views. So if I now go on section view. Still loading for some reason. Click on it again. Okay, so you have to. So if I select, for instance, this midpoint and that midpoint, and now right click and continue. Inventor will now. Calculate the cross sectional view. And project it. So as you can see it has provided um with the right annotations and scale. I will now delete it because it was only a demonstration. 
So the next thing I will be doing is uh, showing you how to how to annotate. So if I go on the annotate tab, you can, for instance, enter dimensions individually, or you can use these shortcuts. So let's say if you're going to use chain dimensioning, you can just um, select on that tool and then you click on the lines that you want to use as a reference for the chain dimension. Then you right click, click and continue and that will automatically dimension your part according to chain dimension. Um, in my case, I'm going to use baseline dimensionally, so I'll select baseline and then select all of my parts. I click continue. And right click again and click on create, otherwise it will just uh, disappear. So yeah, um, this one is possibly a bit irrelevant because you can, for example, instead use the chamfer tool. So you click here, chamfer node. You select your chamfer edge, you select the second edge, and then it will indicate the chamfer. So one mil. 45 degrees. Um, another very interesting tool that you could potentially use is the hole and thread tool. So you can just um, select it. Um, this is not a hole, but it's just to demonstrate how it works. So as you can see, it indicates the size of the hole. Um, so we can proceed on tolerances now and surface finish. So in order to, or, to add surface finish to your drawing, you just have to click on surface texture symbol. Select the surface that you want to add to. Right click, continue. And then you can go into, ma into as much detail as you want. So, removal of material or removal of material prohibited. I'm just going to use a normal surface roughness in microns. So, mine is going to be 6.5 microns. So that's how you add um, surface finish to your drawings. Um, okay, so we can now proceed to talk a little bit about tolerances, limits. Um, if I, for instance, double click on this dimension, I can change the tolerance method. Right now it's on default, so it has no tolerance. You can also swap to reference and that will make your dimension reference which is quite useful when you have a dimension twice so you don't want to over dimension your your drawing and confuse the manufacturer sometimes it's, it's quite practical to use. Um, you can use symmetric deviations so for instance if I want my tolerance to be um, 0.05 of a mil in either direction, then this, this is what we'll be using. Then you could also use deviation. So let's say if it can only deviate 0.01 of a mil. 
positively but 0.04 in the other direction that's how you add them and the other option is just adding the limits so that one is right now on 89.70 so you can say 0.71 the upper devi deviation 0.69 the lower deviation so that's another way of adding your linear tolerances and or you can also instead of having them stacked you can have them linearly so it's just a matter of taste really. okay so the next point how to add geometrical tolerances to your drawings so the next thing that I will be creating is center marks and center lines so this center line will be my datum and I'll add the center mark here so you can see I'll probably be extending my center line okay so the first thing that I will be doing be creating a couple of datums. So you click on datum, click on your reference line, call it, right click, OK. And now I'm going to create another one, probably here. And that one is going to be date B. So with date A, I can click on this point to place a vertical, and then I can just stretch it as I wish. Okay. So I will now show you how to add some geometrical tolerances to your drawing. So this time instead of datum, I will select feature. So I will start by selecting this part of my axle. And now I right click and click on continue. That will take me to the menu. So um, if you click here under symbol, that will let you choose the type of geometrical tolerance that you're after. So in my case, it's going to be radial runout, which is here. Sorry to that runout. So it's going to be point double zero five, and here you can type in your data. So I'm adding information to the drawing by saying that the runout can't deviate more than 0 0.005 of a mil of datum A. Then I can add more geometrical tolerances. I can add um, one over here. Continue. So this one can be, for instance, cylindricity. It can be point point oh nine, and now I can enter a dimension. Right here to indicate.
and then I can continue adding more information. So I can add another feature. So now I can carry on just adding more information to my drawing. So little details like radices. I can add more information and details such as radices. And all the diameters. So yeah, just make sure that your drawing is fully dimensioned, but not over-dimensioned in order to avoid confusing the manufacturer. So I will leave it here. Uh, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.